lined up for the Kenda SRT Heron Hound National. There goes the pro line. It's crazy. We had to go out of Panaka and do a bomb start. 200 guys. Here go the experts. We had to go about 400, 500 yards straight up. And then you see that little mound up ahead on the left. I'll tell you, that thing was the nemesis for everybody. We had a bomb out and then shoot straight left up that hill. It was just covered with complete dust. Here's the start of our race. My heart was just basically just, I, it was crazy, it was skipping. Here we go. I can't even tell you how I felt with this many guys going ahead towards, they said there was a ledge up here. This was crazy. Watch this dude on the Kawasaki. He just eats it in the dust. At this point, I thought, I can't even see. This is crazy. And look at the guys are already up ahead on top of that powder mountain. We rolled up on that thing and then just watch this carnage that takes place here. The guys who got there first, they killed it. But I was back in the dust and I'll tell you what, my hands were shaking. It was just craziness. Look at this stuff, it's just chaos. People were everywhere coming up, going down, going sideways. A lot of the guys couldn't get up so they had to come back down, but you couldn't even see them. And then look, fans are just sitting there watching the carnage, just loving it. I sat and I watched and it was just, I had to wait for my turn because I kept seeing guys down in the dust. I needed my own line. I'm definitely not the fastest guy, but I'm not stupid. I want to finish a race. Everyone I get in, I try to get to the finish line, and I did on this one. Here we go. I just gassed it as hard as I could. This is one of the tougher lines, but I made it. God, it felt so good when I got to the top. And when I did, I was like, oh shit, it's not over here. I actually had on one of the COVID masks just to be able to breathe. A lot of the guys I knew, they said they couldn't even breathe in this silt. It was just nuts. Check out this dude up here coming from the right. He went all the way around the hill and then he just ripped it. Watch this dude, he just rolls down like just full throttle. Here he goes. Every time these dudes would go by too, I just couldn't see. And you know, they're going for all the tea in China. I'm just riding this thing, doing my best I can. But these guys are awesome riders. But here's where I get them every time. I love this stuff. These hills just eat people up. So these are my passes here. I know they're coming. Felt bad for that dude. I don't know what was going on. But here I just dug in, got on the back of the seat, and rode up the hill. I mean, this was tough. This was really, really steep. This camera doesn't even do it justice how rocky, steep, and silty this sucker was. And then you get to the top and you're rewarding, rewarded with a big rocky downhill. And on that other side, that's a silt. And look at these dudes. Like I said, they're going for all the tea in China. It's crazy. I let them roll because I know like in about three hours, I'll start to catch up with them and then we'll get close. I finished this race and it was so hot out there, it was crazy. This is about probably 15 to 20 minutes into the race. I was just super hot. I can't even tell you how hot it was. I think it was at least 95, 100 degrees. It felt like 50% humidity, the clouds were piling up. I just had to pull over, hang out for a second. And it was wild, but from here forward, I didn't stop again. I'll tell you, these guys, man, they were just unrelenting. They just kept pushing and pushing. Some of these guys were just, I mean, they were so good. It was impressive, it really was. And I can't tell you how many guys I saw on the side of the road after a while, and I respected them. Over 30% of the field fell out of this race. That's how hot it was, and I'm sure they didn't fall out because of mechanical issues or anything like that. It was more, they just, you know, they couldn't take the heat. I almost had heat stroke multiple times. You okay? 
bike blew up. This was a 76, 77 mile course and it was dry. We haven't had rain in Nevada for quite a while. Panaka is right near Utah and I'll tell you it was hot and tough and I felt bad for this guy. He's an expert rider. This guy was just passed out. Total heat stroke. I saw you this guy race and he's super fast and the guy is super strong. It was just brutal to watch a big guy like that on the ground. And this track, it just kept going and going through these lava fields. We got down into ditches and through fields and mud. The whole time, I'd say down in this ditch, it must have been 100 degrees with almost no breeze. The only redemption you had was moving forward as fast as you could. This was such a cool little canyon here. I loved it. So what's crazy is it took me well over four and a half hours to finish this race and I I literally thought I was just going to pass out. I was probably hallucinating towards the end. No joke. And the pros, the Kenda SRT pros, these guys are the national champs. They did this race in I think two hours and 20 minutes or something like that. I can't even imagine how fast they were rolling through this stuff. I mean, you got to think about it. It's twice the speed I'm going right here. I don't know how they do it. They just have a way to read the desert, which is just, for me, unbelievable. And I kept rolling up through these ditches and on the trail, and I'd see guys again and again stop. I can't tell you how many guys were either tired, exhausted, went the wrong way for a second, just had it. I mean, look at this silt. This stuff, I can't even describe it. it. It's like baby powder, but lighter and more slippery, and you can't breathe in it. I, it's just wild, and that just went on and on. This was such a godsend to get on these old train tracks here just nice to be able to sit down and hit the throttle and roll god it felt good and look at the sky the clouds are piling up and later on you're not going to believe it i got hailed on as well up in the mountains all right that's the footage i have from lap one here we go lap two i got out the old gopro first of all i got to say when i went into the pits to get some water and stuff thank you so much to the gamblers they uh, watered me up and helped me get my bike going and it was so crazy hot. I think a lot of guys were finishing up in their minds after lap one, but we all went out back on the course, as many of us as we could. And uh, as you can see in the sky, the clouds were definitely piling up. Lap two was, I liked it so much more than lap one. I mean, it was still the same deal. Everybody's pulling off, taking a break, it was hot. But as we went further and further up into the mountains, we got a really nice surprise. Once we get back here into this really tight canyon, all of a sudden the sky opened up and it started to hail. The temperature dropped about 30 degrees, which was so nice. Absolutely got soaked, which, you know, that was, that was something that I couldn't wait for. Again, we haven't seen rain in Nevada for probably 120 days or something like that. So rain was a special treat. But this section through the woods, I could feel the rain. I could, I could smell it coming. I knew it was either gonna rain or something was gonna happen. I could feel the temperature dropping and that breeze was coming in. This was, uh, this side of the course though, I have to say it was definitely tougher. And as we kept going and going, I thought once we got up here through these canyons, I thought, oh, cool, no problem. This will feed right back down to the finish line. No, no problem whatsoever. But the course kept going and going and going. And I just, I just kept talking to myself. I kept saying, you know what, dude? You're gonna make this race. You're gonna finish it. Just keep rolling. So this is the start of the tight canyon right here. I knew something was going on when I saw the rock formations and this canyon went on for, I don't know what it was, three miles, maybe something like that. 
So I got to speed up the footage here because I was really picking my way through. I was absolutely exhausted as was, you know, the rest of the field by this point. Remember, I'm an intermediate rider. I'm no expert. I'm no pro whatsoever. So I ride. I enjoy it. I have fun. I'm not going for the win. I wish I could say I was uh, that good where I could, I could place. Every once in a while, I'll get a third or something like that. I think this race overall, out of 200 guys, I was 125th, which I felt perfect about. And again, 30% of the field dropped out. So I rode every single mile and made it to the finish line. Now check this out. This is crazy. You'll start seeing the skies opening up here and hail is coming down and I can just feel it pinging off of my helmet. And it just kept coming more and more and it was like bam, 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 bam. It was really starting to slam my helmet. And I thought, man, how big is this hail gonna get? Luckily it was only, I don't know, it was maybe uh, biggest it got was a quarter inch, but it was a lot of hail that came down. So again, I had to speed up the footage through this section because you know we were just picking our way through and all of us were absolutely exhausted. I kept seeing these same guys again. You know, I'd leapfrog them, they'd leapfrog me. But we just kept moving. We kept going all the way down to the finish line. And uh, I gotta say, Moran and uh, the Kenda SRT Heron Hound guys, they put on one hell of a race. This was a very, it was, you know, when I talked to the pros later, they said, oh, that wasn't a super hard course. But with the heat, I thought the course was challenging as it was. But with the heat, it was a huge challenge. But I guess if you're going twice the speed, no problem, right? Anyway, check out that hail coming down now. It's just, it keeps coming more and more. And this is where the temperature really dropped. It just felt so good to have that happen and uh, this part of the course, this was my favorite by far. I always like this tougher, kind of tight technical stuff. This is my wheelhouse. I'm not a wide open road guy, but uh, this was, you know, this was definitely the trail ride stuff and I know the desert racers, they probably don't enjoy this tight technical stuff as much, but for me, this was fantastic. Listen to that. So this is probably a good three and a half hours into the race here. So I'm guessing this was probably about mile 55, 57, something like that. I mean, to say that I was exhausted is definitely an understatement. And, um, I, you know, the thing is, once you get this far, there's no stopping. But I definitely had slowed down. My body was just, it, I drank six liters of water. Listen to that. So six liters of water during the race. And I still was so thirsty I think I drank like two huge Gatorades afterwards I just kept drinking everybody was dehydrated all right we're doing this killing isn't that cool that sound so awesome I love it look at all the hail on the ground here now it just kept coming down Just like little waterfall stair steps after stair steps. Some of them early on I had a bulldog because I was just looking down and I thought, man, I don't even know if I can ride off that. Normally I'd have no problem whatsoever, as would most people. But you're just so beat and just so hot. So right around here though, that water really started to soak in. It felt so nice.
Look at that. It's almost, I don't, it was really, it was a hailstorm is what it was. It just looked like snow, but it was just big pieces of hail that you can see on the ground there. And the lightning was just striking down. I mean, it was probably, I don't know, 500 yards from me at one point. Now this was a trip right here. You see that? Just went from clouds to sun again. And then we had chocolate cake trail for a while, which was really nice. All right, this is five miles from the finish. That's Coach from Moran there. See, that was a site I kept seeing again and again. There'd just be bikes on the side of the trail all over the place. Sometimes it'd be guys with them. Sometimes it was just a bike. I don't know if the people ran out of gas or just got picked up or what, but 30% of the field not finishing. That's probably the most I've ever seen in any race. So of course, we finished up this last four miles and we had more of these little dusty, silty roads. So I just started laughing. And right around this point, I think I started hallucinating too. I kept thinking there were people right behind me, which there weren't. And this hill right here, looking down in the valley, I could see the finish line and I knew I was there. It was only a couple miles to go. Just felt so good to know we were, we were coming in. Everybody else said the same thing. When they saw that, they were like, here we go. So one last silty road, we dropped down and back into the finish line. It was a fantastic race. Gotta say I'm super tired, but I can't wait to do it again. Just, just finished the Panaka Heron Hound. I'm dying. Adios.